Hey guys, welcome to shop. On today's video, I really just wanted to say thank you for all the support and everything else. And kind of segue into a little metrology talk. Uh, metrology is the art and science of precision measurement. And basically it's measuring stuff really closely. Um, once you start getting into sub thousandths of an inch resolution, a lot of it is about uh, feel and experience and kind of guesstimation. So we're a little bit limited in our metrology equipment here. I do have a Rockwell hardness tester that's not calibrated. So I can talk a little bit about it and explain the value of it, but I'm not going to do a demonstration because it doesn't work and we don't get repeatable results. I do need some special calibration tools I don't own. Um, and unfortunately the calibration tools cost more than the value of my Rockwell hardness tester. Uh, so if something falls into my lap, we'll calibrate it and we can do a good video series on that. But now that, that that's out of the way, um, in this shop, like a lot of guys, I am limited in that my most precise way to measure things is on a surface plate, um, with a dial test indicator that reads in 10 thousandths of an inch. Now that's far beyond, I think, what the typical hobbyist will need. And I, frankly, based on comments, my uh, crowd is the hobbyist. So we're really catering to a hobbyist's um, metrology needs. So there's a lot of different ways to measure things precisely. You know, we can measure squareness, we can measure parallelism, we can infer parallelism from squareness, and we can infer squareness from parallelism. Um, so parallelism is basically how close two sides of a part are being into the same plane. Uh, and squareness is how close to a true 90 degree angle, um, two faces are like this. So, uh, they're related, but they're not the same. And I think they're important concepts to understand when we get further down the line into other work. Now, are they super duper important to understand to make good parts? I would say no, personally. Um, a lot of it is just because something is out of specification doesn't mean it won't work. And when you're working in a hobby shop, you have the ability to fit parts to each other. So your tolerances don't matter as much. Um, the more parts in a system you make, the less your tolerances matter because you can fix it with the file or something else. Now, here's the downside um, to having a lot of measurement tools is you start scrapping more parts because you're able to test more. You're able to really just test more of them. And so measurement and inspection is kind of a fine line of it needs to be close enough to work. But if you try to make everything perfect, you'll never get anything done. And I think from the hobbyist and shop owner's perspective, that's where the art comes into the science with metrology. Now, you know, I've done a bunch of videos on specific measuring instruments. And I would say the difference between an instrument and a tool is how precise they are. Now, most days I call my lathe a tool, but there's days where I treat it as an instrument. Same thing with the milling machine. Now, a lot of your tools, are more precise than you really use them for on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, it's actually really impressive what you can do with kind of a clapped out old turd. Uh, you know, like my lathe's a cheap Chinese lathe and, you know, I can hit half a thou on it without a ton of trouble. You know, you got to put your work in and you can't just slap parts on and call it a day. You've, you've got to pay attention, but it's not, you know, I'm not sweating and freaking out. I know I can do it. And I do do it. I don't like to do it, but I can do it. Uh, same thing with the mill. Like it actually blows me away how easy it is to hit two or three ten thousandths of an inch with a boring head. Uh, you know, I say this in the next video, I'm going to blow my whole way over size because I'm talking instead of focusing. But, you know, it, with a little bit of practice, this stuff comes to you. Really, the, the hard part um, on the machining side is when it's not a perfect cylinder and not a perfect square. And if it's perfect square, really easy, a uh, perfect cylinder, really easy. It, when you start getting into tapers and having a bunch of different journal diameters on a shaft, like, okay, then it gets complicated and you start, gotta start paying attention. You know, 
really little stuff you're going to worry about deflection. But back to metrology. So the thing with metrology is metrology is just checking your work. Um, it's like when you're doing math, you proof your work, uh, you know. So from my shop perspective, I see metrology is just making sure you did everything else right. In a perfect world, we don't need any measuring equipment because if we're working with known sized stock, when we touch the tool off, we take off a known amount. And we don't live in a perfect world. There's deflection on the part, there's wear on the tools, there's stick slip in the machines. So, you know, metrology and machining, they're, they're just two sides of the same coin. And I think, in my opinion, you have to treat them as going hand in hand because all of the things you get to in metrology, which is the limits of your measuring instruments, you have to understand the limits of your machines in your measuring instruments are going to, all of them are going to have quirks that you learn over time. Like I've got one micrometer where there's a little wear in the screw. So it reads slightly undersized when we're at its max travel, you know, and I just, I know that it's my everyday micrometer. I want to use the most worn out ones on, you know, the minimal precision parts, because with that micrometer, I can still hit a plus or minus one thousandths of an inch tolerance easily. And I also know I'm not going to freak out if I'm a couple tenths off with that mic because you kind of have that built in. It's not perfect. And then I have my separate set of micrometers I only use for high precision um, inspection. Well, highest precision inspection for this shop. So you, you kind of take that into account and you only you use the bare minimum to achieve your goals and objectives with a part. And that's the thing. You've got to understand exactly what you need to accomplish a task. And you also don't want to constrain yourself by going above and beyond that. Like um, I'm working on a PM research steam engine and I have a lot of tolerances on that that are plus or minus five thousandths of an inch. That's a pretty big range, but it's a perfectly reasonable range where you actually need, you almost want certain parts to be five under and certain parts to be five over. And you've also got other parts that are specifically plus zero. So you can't be oversized, but you can be five thousandths undersized. So you need to understand like, okay, we need clearance on this. And that's where your tolerances come into where as a machinist, when you're given a drawing, you don't get the choice of deciding what your tolerances are. You go to what's on the drawing because whoever engineered it, which is a separate process. And I am not an engineer, so I will not speak to that process is you go with the engineered specifications. So when you see, okay, plus zero minus five, what you might want to do if you don't have a special reamer for that is use a boring head and you sneak up on, you shoot for the difference. So your goal size is two and a half thousandths under the nominal call out on the drawing. Nominal call out being the named dimension. For example, if we have a hole that says it's one inch, plus zero minus five. What I do to hit dimensions reliably is I shoot for one inch or I shoot for 977 thousandths of an inch or 978 thousandths of an inch because I want to be two and a half thousandths undersized. So if I overshoot a little bit, I'm still not out of tolerance. And if I undershoot a little bit, I'm still within tolerance. In you know, the tighter your tolerance is, the more careful you have to be with things. Where with a um, milling machine for squareness and this particular vice, I can just put the part in and not seat it with the hammer if I'm okay with being out three thousandths of an inch with squareness. And metrology is just checking that everything you've done on the machine went the way it was supposed to. And you can take advantage of that art and science of precision measurement and take your measurements while you're still on the machine. 
So that's something that's really interesting. And we can, in videos, I'll try to take on certain jobs. I'll take a video of how you can check your work quickly on a machine. And we can sort of discuss the thought process that goes into it together. And if that's something you guys are interested, absolutely, please follow the channel and, you know, please comment. And also, those of you who are um, inspection guys, correct me on stuff. Uh, there's always more to learn. And that's the, the thing is inspection is a different skill set than making the parts. So there's a lot of really good machinists who are terrible inspectors. And there's a lot of really good inspectors who aren't good machinists even though they work in the same shop and they might literally just be on the other side of a door and you're working on the same part, but you're a different part of the process. So thanks for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed this and you know, let's learn more together.